Hi everyone, welcome to part three on our video lecture for section 11.1 .1 on approximating functions with polynomials. In the first two parts of our video lectures, we've seen how we can turn a function and we write it here as a polynomial known as a Taylor polynomial of nth order. Now we also use our approximations here to estimate the value for a function near a particular point. Well, in this video, I want to discuss here the error between our approximations. So let's begin here with the definition for the remainder of a Taylor polynomial. So let p sub n be a Taylor polynomial of order n for some function f. Then the remainder here in using p sub n to approximate the function at some particular point is the following, r sub n of x, the error, or sorry, the remainder, is equals to the function value minus the polynomial approximation. Okay, so now that we know what the remainder is, let's see how we can find it. And we're gonna be using Taylor's theorem, or also known here as the remainder theorem. So let's say that we have f to be a continuous function with derivatives up until the f, well, up until the n plus one derivative on some open interval i containing a. Now for all x in i, the function is gonna be equals to the Taylor polynomial plus the remainder for this Taylor polynomial, where piece of n here is, again, our nth order Taylor polynomial centered at a. So the remainder then is gonna be given by the nth plus one derivative at C all over n plus one factorial times x minus a raised to the n plus one. Now this one here is gonna be for some point C between x and a. Now we're seeing here that our remainder here is the nth plus one derivative evaluated at some C. But the thing is, we don't really know what that C is, however, we're gonna be using a very similar trick to the one that we use whenever we were approximating areas with either trapezoidal rule or Simpson rule and actually talk about an upper bound for the error. So in this case, we're gonna be looking for an upper bound for the n plus one derivative evaluated at some c. Okay, so this is how we're gonna be estimating the error. So let n be a fixed positive integer and suppose that there exists some number m such that the absolute value of the nth plus one derivative at c is less than or equals to some m value for all c between a and x, and we have here inclusive, meaning that we're dealing with a closed interval, essentially our bounds are a and x. Now, the remainder for the nth order Taylor polynomial for f centered at a is gonna be satisfying the following. The absolute value for the remainder is gonna be less than or equals to our upper bound m divided by n plus one factorial times the absolute value of x minus a raised to the nth plus one power. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of problems here where we're gonna go ahead and approximate the error for some Taylor polynomial. Now let's begin with this first example where we're being asked to approximate the value for e raised to the 0.5 using a third order Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x and estimate the error. Now, at this point here, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and refer to a previous video where I go over this problems. Now, I will say that you can go ahead and maybe listen to it at a 0.5 speed, because you know, I guess I talk a little bit slower, but I'll let you take a look. Good luck, see ya. So, let's see. Let's approximate e to the 0.5 using a third Taylor polynomial for e to the x. And let's also estimate the error. All right, so near, x equal to zero, e to the x is approximately the same thing as, uh, well from above our third order polynomial approximation was one plus uh, x plus one half x squared plus one over three factorial, but what is three factorial? Well, three factorial is three times two times one, so that is six x cubed, right? Okay, now that means that e to the 0.5 is approximately one plus 0.5 plus one half times 0.5 squared plus one sixth times 0.5 cubed, and that was 1.6458. Okay, so 1.5, I'm sorry, e to the 0.5 is approximately 1.6458. All right, 
Now, what about the error? So remember that our formula was the absolute value for the error was less than or equal to m over n plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of x to the n plus 1. Okay? So what we have here is essentially r3 times x is less than or equals to, call it here m, over n plus 1, so 4 factorial, times the absolute value of x, so what's our x here, the 0.5, now might as well write it here, I didn't see that I didn't write it, might as well include it, 0.5 times 0.5 raised to the fourth power, okay? Now, as I was talking about here, so what about that m? So how can we choose an upper bound for the error? Now, remember, we know that m is greater than or equal to f to the n, well, f of the n plus 1 derivatives at t, where t is a number between uh, t, and, well, 0 and x. So, know here that f of the fourth derivative of f at t, its absolute value, is less than or equal to m. And this is the relationship or the inequality that we want to use to help us determine what is m. So what is the fourth derivative of our function? Well, because we're still dealing with e to the x, the fourth derivative is still e to the x. Well, in this case, we're at t. is less than or equals to m. Now, how can we use that information to figure out m? Well, a hint that I can give you guys is to look at the behavior for this function here. Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, we know that e to the t is, is that an increasing function or a decreasing function? What's the exponential? So it is. And also, what is the interval of t? Okay, so with that established, we see that e to the t, is it an increasing or decreasing function? What's an exponential? So e to the t is increasing on the interval. So t, remember, was the values between 0 and x. So t is increasing on the interval from 0 to 0.5. Now, if we know that t's, the e to the t is increasing on the interval from 0 to 0.5, then we know that the highest value that this can attain is e to the 0.5. So its highest value. So if we know the highest value, then we know that e to the 0.5 is less than or equals to m. Now that in itself is not telling us much, right? Because we were starting with wanting to approximate the e to the 0.5. So what we can do instead here is choose values that we know, because remember, this m here is serving more as an upper bound. So what we can do here is say that, okay, well, I know that e to the 0.5 is less than or equals to e to the 1, right? Okay, now I know that e to the 1, that's about 2.7. So I know that that here is 
less than 3. So I'm going to say that m is equals to 3. And again, that's only because I know those values. I know that e to the 1 is less than 3. And I know that e to the 1 is greater than e to the 0.5. Okay, so with that said, let me give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, so now that we know that <coughs> m is equal to 3, or we're choosing m equals to 3, then we can see that the error here for the third degree polynomial, or third order approximation, is going to be less than or equals to 3 divided by n plus 1 factorial, so 4 factorial times 0.5 raised to the fourth power. And that is approximately 0 0.00781. Okay, now one thing to point out though, when we're estimating the errors, uh, we actually want to round up the first non-zero digit. So what we want to say instead here is that the error is going to be less than or equals to. So this number rounded up, so it's going to be 0 0.008. Now the reason that we round up is because, well, we don't want to underestimate the error. Now, one thing that I'll mention right now is this m that I chose 3. Now, does it have to be 3? No, not really. Typically, when we do this calculation, we're actually overestimating the error. And the only reason that I chose 3 was because I know that 3 was greater than e to the first power. But really, if, since, okay, if we're using a calculator, we can see that uh, e to the 2, or I'm sorry, e to the first is, or what is e to the 0.5 basically? Well, e to the 0.5, uh, let's see here, oops, I lost the calculator. There we go, if I, see to, if I knew that e to the 0.5 was 1.6, then I could have chosen m equals to 2, which would give us an even less, or an even smaller error. But again, remember this number is really just an it's serving as an upper bound of what the error might be because right now you're choosing that your error is less than 0 0.008 and that is reassuring but the if we actually went ahead and found the actual error um, which I'm going to do right now so you guys can see so going to Desmos here since I already have to find the functions um, I'm labeling f as e to the x and I'm labeling p our third degree approximation or third order polynomial uh, here. So okay, what's the difference between f of 0.5 minus p of 0.5? Notice that the difference is actually closer to 0 0.003. But our error approximation here was saying that okay, yeah, your error, whatever you get, is going to be less than 0 0.008. And that that's what we were finding, more where we're not finding the actual error, but an upper bound to the error saying, okay, the error has to be less than those numbers. Okay? So, yeah, if we would have chosen m equals to 2, and in fact, if we repeat the calculations for m equals to 2, we would see here that, okay, well, if m is 2 now, 2 over 4 factorial times uh, 0.5 to the 4th is 0 0.005. So even then, choosing m equals to 2 is giving us a smaller value. It's like, oh, your error is less than 0 0.005 so still the actual error is still well within those values right okay now on to another example well before we do that I'll just recap here so a couple of things to point out the error bound is larger than the actual error as we just saw because the error formula generally overestimates the error now and again remember when we use the formula here, we always round the error estimate up to the first non-zero digit, so basically we don't, claim, we don't claim more accuracy than it is justified. Now when we round the approximation, well we should also round to the number of the decimal, to the number of decimal places. 
So our value here, uh, so we got 1.6458. If we're rounding to the third decimal place, then our estimation here, might as well put it as a to the 0.5 is approximately 1.646. With error, Since I, since I use three for this one here, uh, less than 0 0.008, okay? So now, on to the next example here. It's gonna be one that is similar but different. So similar in the sense that, yes, we're still using tail approximations and calculating errors, but this time around, we want to find the Taylor polynomial at x equal to zero that approximates e to the x with an error less than 0 0.005 on the interval from negative one to one. So this time around, we don't know what's our n, we don't know the order of the approximation, we just know that we're looking for an order that produces an error less of 0 0.005. Okay, so begin here with our formula, so the error for x is going to be less than or equals to m over n plus 1 factorial times x raised to the n plus 1. Okay. Now, again, remember, we want to figure out what is this m. Well, if we're still using the exponential function, well, we know that f to the n plus one, well, the n plus one derivative of our function at t, it's still gonna be e to the t, right? Now, because the t here is, well, actually I forgot the absolute value, there we go. Now, because we're saying, okay, it's the absolute value and we're going from zero to one, then we're essentially saying, okay, well, the highest value is gonna be, is going to be at t equals to one. So we can use the same approach as we did on the previous example and say that, okay, well, e to the one is less than three. So I'm gonna choose three to be my m. So because I wanted to find the error and I want it to be less than 0 0.05, then the equation that I'm gonna be working with is three divided by n plus one factorial times x, which where essentially we can choose one, because again, if x is going from negative one to one, it's the absolute value. So I'm just gonna get one raised to the n plus one. Well, one to the n plus one, it's just gonna be one. So what I'm gonna be looking for is, okay, well, if I have three over n plus one factorial, for which values of n is this gonna be less than or equals to zero? Point zero zero five. So at this point, since this is the uh, the inequality that we're working with, we can just try selecting different values of n. So we can go straight into a calculator. And now if we put n equals to one, then what do we get? Then and just be a, a half. Uh, I'm sorry, one point five or three halves. I'm just going to go directly to decimals here. And there we go here, I have my expression three over n plus one factorial. And if n was one, then I got the three halves, the 1.5s. Now if n was two, then I got 0.5. If n is three, then I got 0.125. And it's four, I got 0 0.025. And it's five, oh, I got now 0 0.004, which is less than the 0 0.005 that I was looking for. Now just for six for the good measure and we say, okay, well it's something really, really small. Well, maybe not really, really small, but it's certainly smaller. But 
we really just needed to go all the way to the fifth order polynomial to get an error that should be less than 0 0.005. And we can see here, uh, let's plug in our function e to the x, let me just change the order here. So here's our e to the x, then the fifth order polynomial is right over here. And when we calculate the actual error, so I mean, it looks pretty accurate, right? Oh, wow, it's pretty good. Uh, not on this side, but over here it was. Um, so when we actually calculate the error, f of one minus p of one, notice that the actual error for the uh, fifth degree polynomial, or fifth order approximation, is 0 0.001. So it is less than we had calculated, but again, remember, that's because we chose the m, which is serving more as the upper bound. Our m is telling us right there that, hey, if m is three, the error will be less than 0 0.005, which it was, okay? So let's see, going back to, okay. So the n equals to five gives an error less than 0 0.005. So we can go ahead and write our fifth order polynomial, so e to the x is approximately 1 plus x plus a half x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial, I'll just write it 3 factorial, x cubed plus 1 fourth, well 1 fourth factorial, x to the fourth plus 1 over 5 factorial, x to the fifth, gives an error less than 0 0.005. Okay. Now, another problem here. So this problem here says that a company produces certain goods and it can sell sine of 1.1 thousands units on a certain day. Now let's approximate sine of 1.1 1 .1, uh, 1 .1 by using the fifth Taylor polynomial at x equal to zero for sine of x and also estimate the error. Well, okay, now this time around notice we're not dealing with the exponential anymore, we're now working with a sine function. Okay, so we want to go all the way to fifth order, so near x equal to zero, the sine of x will be approximately, uh, I'll just call it here uh, a zero, or a naught plus a one x plus a two x squared over two factorial plus a cubed, or a three x cubed, sorry guys, uh, three factorial plus a, we're going all the way to the fifth, okay, so a four x to the fourth over four factorial plus a five x to the fifth over five factorial. Okay, now remember the way that we were going over the coefficients is basically equating the derivative values, right, at x equal to zero. So let's go ahead and figure out what are our coefficients then. So we're starting with the sine function, then the first derivative here will be a cosine of x, then the second derivative will be a negative sine of x for, I'm uh, sorry, third derivative will be a negative cosine of x, then a fourth derivative will be a sine of x. So notice here, we went back to the sine of x after four derivatives. So it looks like there's a pattern, right? So every fourth derivative, you get back to the sine. So it, knowing this, recognizing this pattern is quite easy to figure out much higher derivatives for the sine of x. So well, we can easily see here that f, the fifth derivative of x, well, it's just kind of repeating the pattern, so it'd be cosine of x. Okay, so knowing this, what is f of zero, f prime at zero, 
f double prime at zero, or three pull prime at zero, the fourth derivative at zero, and the fifth derivative at zero. Okay, now lucky for us, we're dealing with a sine and cosine, so nothing too bad. So the sine of zero is zero, the cosine of zero is one. Uh, again, back to sines, back to cosines, but this time around, because it's a negative, so the second, uh, third derivative here would be a negative one. Fourth derivative, back to zero, and fifth derivative, back to one. Okay, so now, it seems like our fifth order approximation for sine, even though it might have looked quite nasty, well, a bunch of the coefficients here, we're gonna have values of zero. Essentially, what you would consider the even ones. I guess I'll write them here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rewriting our problem then, we're going to get that the sine of x is approximately the a, a0 is zero, 0, so we're just focusing on the odd terms, so that's going to be 1 x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. In fact, I'll just get rid of this one. Oops. There we go. Okay. Now, is this a good approximation? Well, let's take a look at Desmos here and see what it says. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so if we have the sine of x in blue and the polynomial, the fifth order polynomial approximation in green, we see that, hey, near zero, it is matching up pretty nicely. Okay, so it's not bad, not bad. Okay, well, <coughs> oh, very important thing here. This one is not an equal sign, right? It is an approximation. Okay, then if that's the case, then we will know that the sine of 1.1 is approximately uh, 1.1 minus 1.1 over 3 factorial. And the 1.1 was cubed plus 1.1 to the fifth over 5 factorial. And that gives us here a 0 0.89159. Okay, so we know then that sine of 1.1 is approximately 0 0.89159. Okay, now what about our error? Well, to estimate the error, we go back to our formula here. So we had our 5 of 1.1. So the value is going to be less than or equals to this pesky m here times x, which we're using x we're saying was 1.1. Uh, raised to the fifth plus one, or I'll just call it six. So the n plus one, so to the six divided by n plus one factorial, okay? These ones here are absolute values. Okay, now how can we calculate the m? Well, in a similar manner here, again remembering that the n plus 1 derivative, so in this case a 6 derivative of t, 
is less than or equal, well, the absolute value of that is less than or equals to m. Now that we were seeing the pattern for repeated derivatives of the sign, okay, what would be the one that comes next? Well, then now it gonna, it's going to be a negative sign. So we have a negative sign of t, the absolute value is going to be less than or equal to m. Now, okay, what's our t? Well, remember our t, okay, from if we're going from 0 to 1.1, right? These are the numbers between 0 and 1.1. Now, we could say that m is going to be greater than the absolute value of a negative sign of 1.1. But that's the thing, though, is like, well, that's what we were trying to approximate in the first place, right? So it's not going to help us figure out an upper bound here for or to get m. So is there another property that we can use? Should we know, okay, well, is the sine function increasing, decreasing on the interval from 0 to 1.1 or things like that? Well, we don't even need to do that because if you recall, because it's a sine function, the sine of any input, it is going to be between a negative 1 and a 1. So the highest value you can possibly get is a 1. So we can go ahead and say that, hey, well, if we know that, then what we're essentially getting here is that 1 is less than or equal to m. So we can go ahead and choose that m equals to 1 as our upper bound. So knowing that then, what we would get here would be 1.1 to the 6th power divided by 6 factorial. I just put a 1 there. Well, what's 1.1? to the 6th power divided by 6 factorial. Now when I put it into the calculator, I get a 0. Point, let me put it in black here, 0. Point zero zero two four. But again, we round up. So the error is going to be, going to be approximately 0 0.0003. Now again, uh, when we mean round up, it's not, oh, the next number is 4, so it doesn't round up. Remember, we're, we're not trying to underestimate the error, so as long as it's a number to the right of 2, just round up to keep things, round up to keep things safe. Okay, so this one here is our max possible error. Oops. Okay. Now, let's see what we're getting here. Okay, so remember, we were told, we were told that the company produces certain goods that can sell uh, in the thousands of units. So, how much was sold? Well, company sold. I'm not sorry, not um, not sold. Produces. Uh, our answer was 0.89159. So, if it's in the thousands and rounded to the nearest uh, whole product here, <coughs> it's going to be a thousand. Well, let's see, one, two. All right, so eight nine. And round it to nearest uh, unit, so rather than 1.5 is going to be 892 units with a margin of error or possible error of 0 0.003 times 1,000, so 3 units. Okay, so to play it safe, the company should probably produce 895 units. Okay. All right, guys. So now we've seen the fifth order degree polynomial for a sign, and it's pretty nice, right, that we can see that, hey, it turns out that an exponential or a sine function 
I can treat it as a polynomial, which it's easier to manage. Okay, now I do want to go over a couple of more problems here, but looking at the video, it's getting a little bit long, so uh, we're just missing three pages, actually four. Um, about four examples. So we'll probably continue with those ones. Um, I'll upload the video later on Thursday. Okay, and then we're going to be jumping into series, but not just series, Taylor series. So, fun stuff. Alright guys, we'll see you there.